Hello Year 4 and welcome to your first geography lesson. Uh, you had history last time, so this is the first time you're doing geography in Year 4, which is really exciting. It's a really, really interesting topic about volcanoes and earthquakes. Following on from what you did in Year 3 on rivers and mountains. So let's get straight into it and let's go. So, to understand how volcanoes and earthquakes occur, we're going to need to know how the Earth is structured. So that's what our lesson is about today, the structure of the Earth. But before we delve in, we're going to quickly do a knowledge quiz, as you usually do at the beginning of your history and geography lessons. So in this knowledge quiz, you're going to have some questions on the topic we did last half term on the Romans. And you're going to also have a question on rivers and mountains. So I'm going to read the question, give you a few seconds to think, and then I will highlight the correct answer. If you need a bit more thinking time, just pause me. And then when you've had a think or written something down, unpause me and continue with the quiz. So your first question is, the Romans built houses from what? Read the answers, have a think. So yes, if you said that the Romans built houses from brick and stone, you are correct. It was the Celts that built houses from wattle and daub. The Romans came and built them from brick and stone. Question number two. The building in the centre of a Roman town was called a what? In the centre. Yep, well done. The correct answer is a forum. So the forum was in the centre of the town and it's where people traded and sold goods. Question number three. A polytheist always worships. Look at the key word there. So yes, a polytheist always worships more than one god. So the word poly means many. The polytheist worships more than one god. If you worship one god, you're a monotheist. And druids were the Celtic priests. So they weren't the people that the Celts worshipped, but they were the priests. Question four. Which item of jewellery did the Romans introduce to Celtic Britain? Yep, well done. It was dolphin rings. So we looked at lots of different jewellery, but the ones that the Romans brought over for, to the Celts were dolphin rings. The Celts already had crosses, torques and fibulas. And your question from last year in geography, why were many settlements formed close to rivers? So have a think back and try and remember why were many settlements formed close to rivers? Give you a few seconds to read through these answers. And if you got it, well done. It is this first one here. Many settlements were formed close to rivers because it made it easy for people to trade goods and transport goods by boats. Well done. Let's get to our lesson. So our lesson today is looking at the structure of the earth. Here is a diagram where someone has sliced the earth down the middle and it's showing it's four layers. There are four layers in the earth. So let's find out more about them. The first layer that we can see on that diagram, this part here, which probably looks the most familiar to us, the crust is where we live. Two thirds of the crust is covered in oceans and only one third of the crust is covered in land. So if you think of all the people in the countries in the world, they only take up one third of the crust. So the rest is ocean. So there's more ocean than there is land on our earth. The crust is hard and solid, but it's not very thick. So again, going back to this picture, as we can see, you can see it's a lot thinner than some of the other layers. That is the crust. The layer beneath the crust is called the mantle. The mantle is the thickest layer of the earth and it's made up of hot molten rock called magma. The temperature is extremely hot in the mantle. So going back to our diagram again, you can see that the mantle is much thicker than the crust and it's a lot, lot hotter. So a human couldn't go there 
we wouldn't be able to get down that deep and still survive because by the time you get through that thin layer of crust to the mantle, the temperature is already going up, 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 getting very hot. The next layer under the mantle is called the outer core. The outer core is the only layer of our Earth which is a liquid and it's made of iron and metal. Here we have somebody making something and scientists think this is what the Earth's outer core mostly looks like. So it's a liquid, it's very, very, very hot. At the centre of our Earth, so here's another diagram which is very similar. At the centre, we have the inner core. So the inner core is the absolute hottest part of the Earth. It's about 6,000 degrees. So at the moment in London, it's about three degrees if we're lucky. So you can see how much hotter the inner core is than the temperatures that we are used to on the crust. Now, the inner core is actually solid. It's a solid metallic ball made mostly of iron. And it's a solid, not a liquid, even though it's so hot, because there's so much pressure on the inner core from the other layers of the Earth that it's it becomes a solid. There's no room for the particles to move around, so it's compressed into a solid because there is so much pressure. So, let's quickly go through them again. We have crust. We have mantle, we have the outer core, and we have the inner core. So these are the four layers of our Earth. The crust here is the thinnest part where we live. We then go down to the mantle, which is the thickest layer. We then journey to the outer core, which is a liquid. And then we get to the inner core, which is a metallic solid ball, which is extremely hot questions for you. So just have a think in your head, which part of the earth do we live on? And in three, two, one, tell me. Yeah, well done, we do, we live on the crust. And which is the hottest layer of the earth? Have a think. Three, two, one, tell me. Yep, the hottest layer of the earth is the inner core and it can get up to 6,000 degrees. Your first activity is to label each layer of the earth. You have your labels below. And don't worry if you cannot um, have the picture in front of you to label. As you can see next to it here, I decided I would also draw my own um, picture to represent the layers of the earth. So you can do that if you want to. You could either do it with your hand or you could trace around a cuff and then find another smaller circle, maybe glue stick. So you can make your own picture of the earth if you want as well. Now, once you've done that, I would love it if you could challenge yourself and write me a fact about each layer of the earth under your diagram. So if it was me and I was going to do one about the outer core, I might write about how the outer core is a liquid and it is the only liquid layer of the earth. See what you can remember from the first part of our lesson. So either pause me now and do activity one or continue on the video for the second part of the lesson and do the activity at the end. But it might be easy if you do it now just to make sure that you understand what we've been talking about. OK, welcome back and well done on completing activity one. Let's continue to the second part of the lesson. So in the second part of the lesson, we're going to be looking at tectonic plates. Say it after me, tectonic plate. So what exactly is a tectonic plate? So the thin crust that we live on is split into giant plates that are floating on the mantle. Waves of heat come up from the mantle, which allows the plates to move around. So the mantle isn't exactly a liquid, but there's so much heat and there is movement that the plates do move around on top of it. The plates only, however, move about as fast as a fingernail grows, and that is why we can't feel it. So they grow at, so they, uh, sorry, well, fingernails do grow at such a slow rate, but the plates move at such a slow rate that we can't feel them jerking about or suddenly moving, but they are moving all the time, every day, underneath us, the ground, the crust that we live on is moving ever, ever so slightly. 
So what's a tectonic plate? Have a think. Yep, the thin crust we live on is split into plates and they are floating on the mantle. So have a look at this diagram. These are the different plates. Now there's some with quite interesting names like Coco's plate. We also have the Scotia plate. See if you can find the UK, there's a hint. And once you've found it, see if you can work out which plate the UK is on. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds. So well done if you spotted the hint. It is inside this yellow circle, the UK. Go around it again. And it is on the Eurasian plate. Now, some of you might have worked out why this plate's probably called the Eurasian plate. It's called the Eurasian plate because it has both Europe and a large part of Asia on it. So it's the Eurasian plate. So well done if you found the UK and well done if you worked out which plate it's on. Ooh, coming back, how do tectonic plates move? Quizzing you again, 10 seconds, have a think. How do tectonic plates move? OK, hopefully you've either jotted something down or you've got it into your head. So the tectonic plates move because heat comes from the mantle and the plates are floating on the mantle and the waves of heat mean that they move a little bit. So well done. So plates move, we've learned that. How do they move? Now there's three different ways that the plates move. So as we can see on this map, where the white lines are, these are called plate boundaries. So it's kind of where the plates slot together like a jigsaw. But as we've said, they're moving. So what happens when they move towards, away or past each other? So the first type of plate boundary that we have is a divergent plate boundary. My turn, your turn. Divergent. Divergent. So a divergent plate boundary is when two plates pull apart from each other. We're going to do an action to represent this. Everyone get your arms like this. So divergent plate boundaries when two plates pull apart. So we're going to do this. Divergent. Everybody? Divergent. Divergent. Excellent. That action will help us remember that a divergent plate boundary is where two plates pull apart from each other. So when two plates move away from each other, they create a divergent boundary. And when this happens, new ocean floor is formed. So we have two plates pulling away from each other. Obviously, they won't actually move that much. They might move a tiny bit. And that allows part of the mantle to rise up. And as it gets to the top, it cools down and solidifies, making the crust a tiny, tiny, tiny bit bigger. So it'll just make a new part of the crust. Everyone show me divergent again. Divergent. Excellent. The second type of plate boundary is called a convergent plate boundary. My turn, your turn. Convergent. Convergent. Excellent. So on a convergent plate boundary, two plates move towards each other. So this time we're going to need our hands a little bit apart and we're going to do the action as convergent. Everyone again. Convergent. So convergent plate boundary is where two plates move towards each other. Now, when they move towards each other, they might crash a little bit, or sometimes one plate can slip slightly underneath the other plate, as the diagram shows. So when two plates push together, they create a convergent fault. A convergent fault is another word for a convergent plate boundary. If one plate is oceanic, so that's a part of a crust that has an ocean on it, and if one part is continental, so part that has land on it, the oceanic plate will go slightly, like I said, under the continental plate. And when two plates push together like this, they create mountains and volcanoes. So volcanoes form when one plate goes under another. And as you probably guessed, if two plates crash, 
and one doesn't go under. They're going to push up and that is how we get mountains. So everybody show me the action again for convergent. Convergent, excellent. Our last plate boundary is called a transform plate boundary. Transform, transform. So at a transform plate boundary, two plates slide past each other in opposite directions. For the, so for this one, we're gonna get our hands like this and we're going to do the action as transform, transform, transform. Excellent, so a transform boundary, two plates slide past each other in opposite directions. So on a transform boundary, when two plates slide past each other, the movement can be quite jerky and can cause earthquakes. Now we can't really feel the jerkiness of the plate, but the waves that that movement sends up to the earth can lead to an earthquake. And we're going to learn all about earthquakes in the next few weeks. So it happens because two plates, when they slide past each other, one might get a tiny bit stuck. And as it pushes a bit harder to release itself and it gets free, but it's a little bit too fast. And that creates a jerky movement. So our last plate boundary was transform. Excellent. So show me your three plate boundary actions. First, I'd like you to show me divergence. Excellent. Pulling our hands away. For my next one, I would like you to show me convergence. Moving together. Excellent. And for our last one, we have transform. Excellent. So those actions will help you remember the three different types of plate boundaries. So on our diagrams here, the first one we have a divergent plate boundary, the two plates are moving away. And as we can see, there's a little ridge where a bit more of the mantle is rising up to fill the gap. We have a transform plate boundary next. The two plates are sliding past each other, but one of them gets stuck and there's a little jerk and it creates an earthquake. And here we have a convergent boundary. One of the plates is going under the other this time, which has created a volcano. second activity you have three little mini paragraphs to complete about the three different plate boundaries you have words on the sheet to help you so as you can see here for the title of this first one you've got something plate boundary so you're going to need to decide whether this one is divergent convergent or transform then you will need to complete the sentences again if you don't have access to the sheet very easily you can just write these down that would be great and I look forward to seeing all of your geography work on Seesaw. Have a good rest of your day, year four. And I look forward to our next geography lesson where we will be looking at earthquakes. Now, don't forget to practice remembering your plate boundaries with your actions.